Hello friends, today we're going to learn how to use MS Excel Solver to solve a shortest part problem. For this we take the same example which we had taken while discussing the complete enumeration and the Dijkstra's algorithm. This was the example that we discussed. This network will be converted into a distance matrix and a solution space will be created over here. Before we understand these two uh, tables, let's go back to the uh, formulation of a shortest part problem and try to understand how a shortest part problem is related to a linear integer programming formulation. Uh, this is the uh, formulation that uh, we had. Um, the ij is denoting the distance from the node i to the node j. Xij is our addition variable which are going to have only two possible values. One when the arc ij is part of the shortest part. Zero when the arc is not part of the shortest part. And our objective is to minimize the sum product of the ij and xij. The constraints will have three different parts, one for the source node, and one for the sync node, the remaining for the intermediate nodes. And this part of the uh, constraint is denoting the total outgoing from the node i to the remaining nodes. And this is denoting the total incoming to the node i from the other nodes. And the difference of these two is nothing but the total outgoing minus the total incoming to the node i. The total outgoing minus total incoming to node i should be equal to 1 if i is the source node. The total outgoing minus total incoming should be equal to 0 if i is the intermediate node. And it should be equal to minus 1 if i is the final node. And xij, as mentioned over here, it's going to have only two possible values, 0 and 1. Now let's come back to the question. This is the question that we have. Let us convert this network into a distance matrix. These are the nodes of the network. These are nodes of the network. And uh, from S, you are going to travel to the other nodes. S to S traveling is not allowed. A to A traveling is not allowed. B to B traveling is not allowed. So all the diagonal elements will be filled up by a very large number. How large? It should be much larger than any number over here. So I'm taking 100 to be large enough for this problem. So I'm filling off 100 to all the diagonal elements. Now from S, you having only three connections, direct connections. These three direct connections are filled up over here. S to T, S to D, S to E, S to T, you don't have a connection. So these are filled up by large number. From A to S is not allowed. Coming back from any node to the source node is not allowed. So this column also should, uh, will be filled up by large number. Now then, from A to B, you have a connection. You're following the arrow and the uh, distance is 2. From A to C, you don't have a connection. You don't have a direct connection, so it's filled up by 100. A to D, you have a connection, with distance is 7. And A to E and T, you don't have a connection, filled up by large number. From B to S, again, you cannot come back. It's filled up by large number. And uh, from B to A, you cannot go against the arrow, so it's filled up by large number. B to B, you don't, you're not allowed to travel. B to C, you have a number, which is 1. B to D, you have a number, which is 4. B to E, you have a number 3. And B to T, you don't have a connection, which uh, it's again filled up by large number 100. And C, again, you cannot come back at large number. And B to A, and C to A, you don't have a connection. C to B, you can go this direction also, it's 1, and so on. You fill, fill, fill up the uh, remaining rows of the table in this manner. Now, come over here. See why this, uh, why, why the three t, t rows are all large numbers? Because uh, you don't go from T to any other nodes. From T, you don't come back to D and E, and the T uh, is the final node. So from T, you don't go to any other node, so it's filled up by all large numbers. T is, the, T is the final node in pair. So this is the distance matrix created from the network over here. Now let's create a solution space. This will be the solution space. The solution space will keep the values of this decision variables. So in this space, we're going to have either one or zero. So what is this space for? This is space for XA, so XS, XSS. Then this is for X, S, A. This is for X, S, B, and so on. So if you sum up this value, see over here. If you sum up these values over the row, 
this will give the total outgoing from this not s the total outgoing from this not s will be the sum of these values and similarly total outgoing from a will be the sum of this row the total outgoing from b will be this now what about incoming then if you want to find out the incoming to the not s then you will sum up this column the total incoming to the uh, note A will be this column and this column and so on. So let's find, let's write down the total outcoming, uh, total outgoing and total incoming. Total out is denoting the total outgoing, total in is denoting total incoming to the various nodes. So the total outgoing from the note A will be the sum of this. Now you apply this formula to the remaining rows of the table. So these values will denote the total outgoing from the various nodes of the network. Similarly, to find out the total incoming, you sum up the columns. Apply the formula to the remaining columns in the network. These are the total incomings. What was the formula? Uh, what was the formulation saying? The total outgoing minus total incoming should be equal to one if i is s. So let us write down this outgoing total outgoing minus this minus this this is total outgoing minus total incoming from the not s and this should be equal to one because s is the source node similarly let us this see s is the source node t is the sync node final node the remaining are the intermediate nodes so for all the intermediate node it has it has to be zero for the source node it has to be one for the sync node it has to be minus one so that's why the numbers over here one is because is s is a source node minus one over here because t is the final node zeros because these are the intermediate nodes so over here the total total outgoing minus total incoming should be equal to zero one second total outgoing minus total incoming similarly for this total outgoing minus total incoming should be equal to minus one this is how you create the constraints of the formulation. Now, what about the objective then? The objective is a sum product of dij, which is given by the distance matrix, and xij, which is given by the solution space. This is space and this is space. Sum product of these two. So I'm writing this over here. The sum product of this is space and this is space will be our objective function. This objective function. Now you have created uh, the, uh, the, all the requirements to go to the solver. Let's go to the solver and solve the shortest part problem. Let me go to the solver. Let me reset everything. This is the space for Z. Objective is minimization by changing the solution space. And at constraints, your constraints were constraint was uh, the uh, left hand side of the uh, constraint, which was total outgoing minus total incoming uh, equals to equals to relation is equal to and the right hand side. Uh, let us add the condition on the variables also. The variable has to be either either uh, 0 or 1 so it's a binary let's select ok and come out this is the one the variables are binary and the constraints are defined over here let's select the non-negativity condition and select the simplex and solve it See, the solver found a solution, all the constant and optimality condition are satisfied. Uh, this is the total distance and you have the solution over here. From here, you can define the part from A, so you had gone to A, from A, you had gone to B, from B, you will be going to, you will be going to D, and from D, uh, you will be going to T. Let's do it again. From A, so you're going to go to A. From A, you're going to go to B. From B, you're going to go to D. 
from D you are going to go to T and the total distance on this part is 13. You can check it from here. Let me copy this one. S to, S to A is 2 and A to B is 2, 4. 2 plus 2, 4. And from B to D is 4 again. 4 plus 4 is 8. From D to T is 5. 5 plus 8 is 13. And this is this is the number over here. So your part is S to A, A to B, B to D, and D to T. And this is how you find out the shortest part, uh, the shortest part of any given network using Excel solver. Remember to relate these particular calculations to the formulations you have over here. Only then you can understand how the solver is working to solve a shortest part problem. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Keep watching. Keep watching my video. Thank you very much.